What is going on, Pipe fans? So today we are going to do something special. We are going to look at a SGO video from five years ago, and we're going to see if we agree with the list. It's going to be the top 10 uh, boxing video games of all time. Now, we, you guys know I did make my own tier list. I didn't feel that doing it where I isolated that this is the number one and this is the number two and this is the number three would be as contextual to how varied and, you know, subjective this all can be. But in this list, they do. They, they hard. It's a hard and fast rule. This is number one. This is number two. This is number 10. So we're going to take a look at it and see if we agree. We've played a lot of boxing video games. I can't guarantee that I've played every single one that he's going to mention because there are a lot that exist. Um, but I think that we've played the majority of the mainstream stuff and even a lot of the non-mainstream stuff. So it is very possible that there are that, that we've played all of these you know game so let's see if if, if 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 the if the fanatical rating goes in line with the sgo rating from five years ago so it's going to take it to account fight night champion fight night round three fight night round four and all these different games so so it's going to be in a pretty good spot so without any further ado let's go ahead and jump right into it all right here we go from old school nintendo classics to the latest virtual brawlers Today we'll count down the top 10 boxing games of all time. Does your favorite boxing game make the list? Let's find out. Ready? So, so far, everything he showed in that like little preview intro, we've played. We've played Wii Boxing. We've played, that was Fight Night Round. Uh, that was uh, Knockout Kings 2000. Three or 2002 right there at the end uh ready to rumble which she's showing right now uh we played we've played them all we, we we've played all of them that we saw and uh, punch out so you no know, so far we're in a good place to be able to you know is he gonna make this like from 10 to, to 1 or is it just gonna be in no particular order either rumble boxing on dreamcast oh, okay so it's 10 to 1 for a number of reasons there were over-the-top characters that you can actually use compared to wishing you can use them from the punch-out days, from Afro Thunder to a Mia St. John look-alike. What Ready to Rumble did best was making sure that the characters would fight and feel like the way they're represented. Would I put Ready to Rumble in the top 10? It's a tough it's a tough thing to do because there's so many fight night games that are actually good. There's there's uh, you know, there's uh, Knockout King games that are definitely good. Then, you know, we talk about the, the, the Victorious Boxer series, which I have a feeling won't show up here. Um, but those were like the most underrated boxing games. Uh, you know, we talk about the Boxers Row 2, right? The gameplay and career mode super underrated games i don't know if i can squeeze in ready to rumble considering it's arcade skeleton right it's it's basically an arcade boxing game it's really more of a fighting game dressed up as a boxing game it's not too far away from stuff like uh the uh the new game that came out creed rumble boxing it's kind of like that which that game is not a boxing game at all that game is simply a fighting game dressed up as a boxing game um and so was uh ready to rumble however ready to rumble was fun it was really good what i have put it in in, in top 10 i think there's too many other boxing games that are more that, that are deeper, that they, they have more layers to them that kind of touch on the authenticity of the sport a little bit more and have the fun factor for me to squeeze in a, uh, a ready to rumble. But that's just me. I could easily see how someone else can put that on their list. But let's continue. Ring King, play this one too. Ring King on the NES. I remember spending a lot of quarters in arcade playing this game when it was introduced, and it was one of those games I kept in my system to play over and over. It was a clever way to take 2D uh, and make it feel like 3D, right? Give you a plane, like a, a it was, wasn't 90 degrees, but you know, it was you know an angled view 
of the ring and then you could just move around and fight. It it was it was cool. It was definitely cool and it felt ahead of its time back then. For when it finally came to console. Ring King introduced many firsts for the genre of boxing video games. For starters, it was the first game where you were able to move around the ring pretty much the largest damn boxing ring ever, <laughs> along with your opponent. Yeah. Another was the ability to change the attributes, power, speed, and stamina of your fighter during an exhibition and during your progression in the rankings campaign. <laughs> Victorious boxer. Oh, props to SGO because I really thought this was going to fly under the radar, but my man has brought Victorious boxes into the competition. And this, this, for, this one hundred percent deserves to be in a top ten list. I, I don't know if I, I might, I might make a, 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 not a criticism, but a decision based off of what his number one is. But it's so varied. There's so many dynamics to all these boxing games that it's very hard for you to pick one over the other. Um, and Victorious Boxers is one of those games that makes it hard for you to pick one over the other but i'm glad that it made it ranking was hilarious when it uh when it came out but it was one of those first you know games that allowed you to move around it started moving away from just that 2d side kind of scrolling thing and started giving you an opportunity in in a time where you know that was innovative because it was not something people were doing it was almost like a zelda where you could go everywhere but this is boxing and you're boxing another person so it was actually very 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 clever but thank goodness we got some victorious boxes in here let's let's see what he says here's on the playstation 2 was it number eight though i don't know might be a little bit higher for me but let's see game based upon the japanese anime series victorious boxers was a story-driven boxing game featuring Ippo Makanuchi as he tried to climb the rankings of the Japanese featherweight championship. The boxer burned out because his punches were slow and weak and their movement around the ring reflected a fatigued fighter. The punch selection was numerous as well since the sweet science was so respected by the Japanese that the transition from anime to video game was an important part of the game overall. A lot of the characters mimicked their comic versions. One fighter was slow but hit like a truck. Another was fast and wiry and reminded me of Prince Nassim, but it was important to know the style of fighter you selected and how to use them in the rank. The game controls also gave the players so much more ability to bob and weave along with the ability to throw the punches which transitioned into a more fluid and simulated type of boxing gameplay experience. But not only could you lean back and duck forward, you were able to shuffle to the left or right with quick feet and now able to throw punches at different angles. The analog sticks were coming more into play and giving developers more options regarding defensive and offense capabilities of the boxers in the game in general. Yes. Moving on. Yes. So that's the thing that I love that he pointed out. The innovation that they did in Victorious Boxers is felt in boxing video games till this day. The whole move your head you know around and stuff like that that a lot of people credit to the fight night series or the knockout king series um or the fight night series uh that that oh they did that first no victorious boxers was the first to do that a lot of people don't know that they're the first to have that whole freedom of weaving kind of system very innovative where you're moving your hitbox we take that for granted now but it was something that did not exist before that freedom of movement of your own hitbox and moving it out of the way wherever direction you want to move it right the angling that was in victorious boxers we don't it did that didn't really move over to the fight night series it, it definitely you know showed that they had this like very very creative kind of like innovative mindset that that put them you know leagues above anybody else that was doing boxing at the time so yeah victorious boxers we still see the skeletons and the, the bones of what they of the seeds that they planted from that game so in my opinion because of its cultural significance to the boxing video game genre i absolutely think it should be in the top 10 Honestly, personally, I would have it higher, but kudos to SGO for having it in their top 10, period, because it deserves it. Two more recent titles, we have Knockout Kings. 
This series brought boxing legends from all different weight divisions into the game, which in my opinion was a huge victory for casual and hardcore boxing fans alike from all eras. The list included many boxers from different weight divisions and boxing eras with 48 boxers total, including Muhammad Ali, Alexis Arrello, Aaron Pryor, Marvin Hagler, Rocky Marciano, Robert Duran. Now, <clears throat> that one was good, but the one where, and I forget, I sometimes get these mixed up, the one where you can actually punch while in the clinch, I think was the best one out. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it was the one that he just mentioned. Um, I can't remember right now off the top of my head. Uh, but that's the best one of the knockout kings in my uh, in my opinion. But let's move on. <coughs> real deal boxing. Vander Holyfield's real deal boxing on the Sega Genesis was a big one. Once Buster Douglas got knocked out, <coughs> there was a huge rush to get a new face on boxing games, and Evander Holyfield's Real Deal Boxing was by far one of the best boxing games out at the time. One of the biggest features of the game was the training aspect that was mixed into the game where you were building your fighter up to fight for the championship. Once you took a fight for the right amount of money you wanted, and if you won, you can use that money to build up attributes such as power, stamina, speed, and defense. The player was then able to select from several different choices Sparring, jump rope, diet, speed bag, treadmill, weightlifting, punching bag, and head guard that will help increase one or sometimes several of the attributes at once. Greatest heavyweights on the Sega. I think it was a good game. Um, I don't think it was as revolutionary as people kind of give that the credit to it to being I, most of the stuff that was done in that game had been done already with previous games before that um the 2d model i think was done even a little bit better felt more sluggish in the evander uh holyfield uh sega genesis game um but it was it looked it, it, the graphics was the thing that was something to behold at that time. If you could imagine, I know looking at it now, it looks like whatever. But back then, it felt it looked more realistic than all the other ones. While the other ones looked cartoony or kind of like a kind of like a Street Fighter game or whatever. But it it, it didn't do anything super innovative, in my opinion. That wasn't already being done. The ducking and the hitting to the body, hitting upstairs. Those things were already being done uh, before that game did it. So, But could you put it on the top 10? You probably can. Um, 10 is a lot. It's a big number, right? There's a lot of different games that you could put in there. But uh, so far, the one that I agree with the most is the Victorious Boxers one. But let's see number five. Genesis. Now, this game could have been called a Vander Holyfield Real Deal Boxing 2. But greatest heavyweights, actually, many of the greatest heavyweights were actually missing in this version. But it was still a very good boxing game, especially when it came to the career mode. The presentation was a side view, two-dimensional fighter cut off at the thigh area. Boxers were able to toss punches to the head and body and inflict damage to the face with eye cuts if the facial diagram was in the gray. Uppercuts were present and caused a significant amount of damage if landed right during exchanges. Now, a big part of the game was inclusion of past champions in boxing history. Boxers such as Jack Dempsey, Rocky Marciano, Joe Lewis. If you became the champion, you were able to keep boxing in a series of challenge matches until you retired or got retired. Fight Night Champion. Okay, so that game is better than the Holyfield game for sure. So I, if he's going to put both of them in there... I definitely uh, agree with him having the greatest heavyweights better than than their Holyfield uh, Sega game because of the speed. It was sped up. It felt more kinetic. Everything felt more like it felt like there was a real kind of a fight going on as opposed to like the sluggishness of the Evander Holyfield game. Uh, they did, A lot of the fighters did feel like they had their personalities there to a certain extent in terms of the way they fight. So of the two, I would definitely have picked the greatest heavyweights to be the one to be on this list as opposed to the, uh, the Evander Holyfield one. But 
you know, um, it is what it is. Seeing Fight Night Champion here on number four, I'm already in 100% agreeance. Um, this is one of the best. If we're going to look at, you know, a top 10 list of boxing, best boxing games of all time. This was a critically acclaimed uh, boxing game. May have not sold, you know, the best of all of them, right? Like Fight Night Round 3 is untouched in terms of sales but critically acclaimed and you know one of the most fun boxing games that are that that that's out there uh so fight night champion 100 percent i was expecting uh to be on this list but it's number four and that's interesting i want to see what's number three two and one uh for sgo let's continue the very last boxing game from ea sports before they packed up shop and moved over to ufc for starters fight night champion looked amazing now, visual is one of the major things that brings people to want to play a video game, but those that look deep realize that gameplay was the deciding factor who wants to keep playing a game, and especially a boxing video simulation. Now, the total punch control was gone in this iteration and introduced the full spectrum punch control. Online was giving a, given a major overhaul as well with the additions of online world championship and gyms, but the biggest effort EA wanted to put out there was the Hollywood style presentation of the story mode entitled Championship Mode. This is where the player stepped into the shoes of Andre Bishop, a promising amateur world champion at middleweight who was set up by a corrupt promoter and sent to prison. Okay, all right, so I'm already seeing the lining, how he's lining it up, and I'm already agreeing. Um, one thing that I mentioned in my tiers list is that Fight Night Round 4 and Fight Night Round 3, um, I felt were better uh, boxing games than Fight Night Champion. Now, Fight Night Round 4 I felt was better than Fight Night Champion uh, because it was Fight Night Champion. A lot of people don't, don't really, like, talk about that. Fight Night Round 4 and Fight Night Champion are essentially the same game. Um, Fight Night Round 4 felt a little bit more flimsier um, in terms of the punches and how it connects, while Fight Night Champion felt like, over the top in terms of the impact that everything felt like boom 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 like like even the sounds were like these like car door slamming sounds just made it sound even more like poof, poof. everything was you know devastating while it felt a little less devastating in round four however it was simplified fight night champion created a simplified version of the game where you know you press one block button and it blocks everything so it, it, it incentivized pump blocking and it kind of made it feel a little bit less uh realistic looking when you were seeing the top players play the game uh, but then you know fight Night round four it had you know blocking but at least it had a two-tier system or two uh, a multi-block system where you're blocking up and you're blocking down and that at least added an element of uh kind of mixing up your punches going high low and creating that kind of like 50 50 that didn't exist with fight night champion with fight night champion simply blocking blocked everything and if you were good at pump blocking you blocked everything uh so that 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 simplified it so much that it removed a lot of the elements of simulation to it. Now, I know a lot of people get mad when I talk about this, but it is the reality of that game. Does it take away from the fun factor of the game that the game was a really good game that I would 100% put it on the top 10 list? Um, it's one of my favorite games of all time. If you watch that video where I did the tier list, it's one of my favorite games. It's just not one of my favorite, you know, fight night games of all time. I still have fight night round three and four above it and my favorite fight night game of all time is fight night 2004 and i'm wondering if sgo is going to have this in here but fight night round three we're, we're we're jumping into fight night round three this is the most money that they've ever made in the series um and this one uh is 
one of my favorites. Like, it's only seconds of Fight Night 2004 because this had a multi-block system with parrying and all those things look kind of weird with the parrying and how you just float in there. And the idea, the concept was very, very good. The jab was very good because every other punch was dangerous. So the jab was the safest thing you could throw, which incentivized you to use the jab on a high frequency, which is in line with real boxing, the jab's supposed to be the safest one. The jab's supposed to be the starter. The jab's supposed to be the thing that helps you open them up. The jab's supposed to be the thing that you use to, to, to you know, judge range. The jab, the jab, the jab. So that's one thing that I like. Although you could do the big punches, which is probably what you're going to talk about with the, you know, crack, cranking it back and hitting them with the haymakers. Those were dangerous. If somebody, if you did a super haymaker and someone parried it, you're getting knocked out. Out basically for free or put in you're gonna get put in this awkward first person mode and the person is gonna basically get a free knockout off of you just off of that it could turn the tie very very easily so but let's see what they say here moving on the fight night round three this was a game that all boxing fans hardcore sim and casual were waiting for because it was a move to the next generation era of PlayStation 3 Xbox 360 the roster was set at 27 with the inclusion of three hidden fighters, Ray Moe, Goliath, and Big E. That also had double duty appearances of some fighters in different divisions. The soundtrack was arguably one of the best the series ever put out. Online mode was a huge deal with the start of next gen systems as many of the top players went online to compete against each other. Also being able to add the type of punching and blocking style was huge in trying to make blockers who were not in the final build of the game. The total punch control system was still present as well as the addition of upgrades to three types of power punches for fighters for the series. Mike Tyson's I am very curious to see what number one is. I would 100% not put Mike Tyson's punch out at number two. Like, this is one that I s s disagree with so wholeheartedly. Um, Fight Night Round 3 being number three, I, okay, I see that. Uh... Mike Tyson's punch out was insanely arcadish. Um, it just, I don't know if this is the nostalgia speaking or is this just like a consensus thing, right? Like people love this game, right? People that don't even play boxing games love this game. It's such a beloved game. It was critically acclaimed. It's it's in the, like the history of gaming. People love, you know, the punch out. But give me a break, man. Like it, it, it was move side to side. And then punch. And it was very simplistic. Was it difficult? Heck yeah, it was difficult, especially fighting Mike Tyson, uh, where if he punched you once, it was over. But you can't like when if you take off the the the, the nostalgia glasses and you really look at it, like what what are we really saying with you know Mike Tyson's punch out being number two over stuff like Fight Night Champion, over stuff like Fight Night Round Three, over Victorious Boxers, games that that did so much more in the sport, like you could do so much more in the game. Um, to represent the sport. Uh, now, I don't know what what's his criteria for making these the best of all time. Is it based off of the love that it received? That, that So if it's based off of the love that it received, you could make an argument for punch out. But uh, the way I s kind of do that criteria in my head is, which was the better game overall? Which felt more like boxing and was fun? More like boxing and was fun put together. Which one uh, hit that perfect, you know, peak? Uh, and I would not say that, uh, you know, Punch Out was anywhere close, right? I, I, this is, to me, an arcade boxing game. But, you know, it's his list, not mine. This Punch Out on the NES, one of the greatest boxing video games to ever come out. To this day, is still talked about by many boxing fans and casual fans alike with iconic characters and underdog storyline. Little Mac versus Mike Tyson, the heavyweight champion. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! was a video game that even though would not be considered a simulation boxing game by any means, still brought together people who weren't even close to being boxing fans to the TV stand to try out and eventually take a shot. Little Mac in that pink jumpsuit. And no way that tiny dude is beating up a beefcake like Super Macho Man or 
or even Mike Tyson, any of those guys. It's, but still, it was a fun game. Fight night round two. My man said fight night round two. Now, The fact that Fight Night 2004 did not make this list, which Fight Night 2004 was what kind of a game that laid the groundwork for everything else we've seen from the rest of the game or the rest of the series. Because <sighs> they you know, first started, that's when they started finally implementing the head movement where there's full control of the head movement. That's when they first started implementing the, the, uh, the, you know, punch control, right, with, with the analog stick. That's when they first started implementing all of that stuff. Uh, so not only was it a fun boxing game that was uh, showing the authenticity of the sport, it was also a game that innovated. And we still see those innovations in boxing video games till this day. Not it's No different from what Victorious Boxers did. It was an innovative game that the skeletons of those innovations, we still see it to this day. So for it to not make the list, but we got stuff like Ready to Rumble and Ring King. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to disagree with that. Uh, although this is a okay list, it's a decent list. But Fight Night Round Two as number one. Actually, Fight Night Round Two is my least favorite, least favorite Fight Night of all of them. Um, and one of the reasons why was because of the haymaker system. They needed to refine it a little bit more. They 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 got closer to what it needed to be in the fight night round three um, uh, yeah, the gameplay. But fight night round two didn't. Like you people were just walking around with a cock back fist to throw it and then just cocking it and throwing it and then just cocking it and throwing it. And that was basically Fight Night Round 2. If you got into a Fight Night Round 2 game with anybody, that was the game that you were playing. Um, especially if you were playing it, you know, being sweaty with your friends and stuff. That's the type of game that you were playing. You were playing somebody cocking back a fist and then boom and walking around with the and boom. And I didn't really enjoy that because it removed so much of the games, like the tactical nature of it. And it just became a spacing and timing thing uh, with one mechanic that was used over and over again. It was so abused and so tailor made to that game that even if someone was jabbing and hitting you with straight punches and getting out of the way, if you hit them with a few haymakers, but they hit you with a bunch of other shots, you would still win the round, even if you didn't drop them, because they just the 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 weight of each of those haymakers weighed so much more than multiple shots that were like even regular hooks and regular straights and and jabs and all that stuff that would get outweighed by just a few haymakers. So it wasn't even a knocking someone out thing. Even in the scoring system, you were at a deficit. I did not enjoy uh, Fight Night Round 2 um, at all, at all. I thought it was taking things from Fight Night 2004 and kind of ripping it apart in favor of that ability to uh, just do the haymakers because uh, I guess they wanted you to use the analog stick because it was hybrid in 2004. You could do whatever you want. You don't have to use the analog stick, but this game decided, oh, we're going to make you use the analog stick because now... You get better points on with the judges, and you do the most damage. It's not even close. But it ended up being a game that was too focused on that. While Fight Night Round 3 kind of fixed it. Uh, and then, you know, two thousand Fight Night Round 4 was a completely different game. And uh, Fight Night Champion was Fight Night Round 4 with just a one-punch, a one-button block system. So the fact that 2004 did not make this list... I'm not liking that. Having all the momentum for Fight Night 2004, EA need to try and build up from the foundation they set for themselves. The roster included 30... My man just agreed with what I just said. He literally just said, like, there was so much hype for that game, so it was... It was um, uh, received well and they innovated so much but it's like oh but we're gonna talk about fight night round two 
that just w- was like a spiritual success. Well, did what Brown 2004 did, but kind of ruined it with the haymaker system. I, I don't know. Six fighters, including Gotti, Corrales, Duran, and Mosley, as well as Benny Pacquiao. Floyd Mayweather shows up again in addition to a double duty appearances by Roy Jones and Evander Holyfield in light heavyweight and heavyweight divisions. The add on to the TPC was the addition of the EA Haymaker Punch, which was the go to move for a bunch of the headhunters who played the game. The creative boxer system was robust with options this time around as you were able to change weight classes for your boxer during career mode where you could fight as long as you wanted and weren't forced to retire as in previous installments. Also, with the addition of the EA Sports Cutman was a great mini game to have for players to help decrease damage the boxers took in the rounds. To- okay, I will say that this mini game, a lot of people love this mini game, and they were the first to bring this mini game in. But this is just a mini game for the corner. Like, give me a break. This should not be so heavily weighed into why this game is better than. 2004 right or even fight night round three that basically has this mini game if you're gonna you know what i'm saying like the, either way whatever well it is what it is to keep them in the fight this was a big addition to the series given the player control as they were making a difference for their virtual fighters that's it for today's countdown did your favorite boxing game make the list let me know in the comments below be sure to like subscribe and let me that's just throwing salt in the wound when you're saying, did your favorite boxing game make the list? And we're literally, and he's literally overlaying that <laughs> with Fight Night 2004. That's what, that's my favorite boxing game, if not one of my favorite boxing games of all time. Yeah, my favorite boxing game didn't make the list, SGO. It didn't make the list. All right, we're going to end it there. But if you guys want to see what I think, of uh, boxing games and where they sit on the tier list of all times. We do a full tier list right here. So go ahead and check it out. Let me know what you think. Am I right? Is mine more accurate for you or is this SGO list more accurate for you? Kudos to SGO. This was a really cool video. It was done five years ago and I respect it. You know, all, it, when it's all said and done, all of this stuff is subjective anyways, but I think I was more on the money, (laughs) subjectively speaking.